Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is February 23rd and right now we're looking at the mid-level water vapor loop, Hawaiian Islands bottom left, Pacific Northwest to the upper right. Check out our system coming through this afternoon and evening. It's going to bring some windy conditions across the region. We'll take a look at those speeds. Rain and precipitation just continues to fall for many areas. We're still dealing with that warm air aloft as well. So we have flooding concerns across much of the Pacific Northwest and then we have our finale out here across the pacific ocean it is now north northeast of the hawaiian islands it is under development and this is going to bring a very powerful low pressure system right off our coastal areas we'll dive into the latest on the details of that strong storm here as we go through the video this morning and again it looks like a fruitcake here look at all the purples and pinks and tans and grays and greens and blues all over the pacific northwesters that's how you know things are active but let's dive in and take a closer look and you'll see some of the flood watches up we got some wind advisories out there high wind watches are in effect we've got some gale watches and mornings in effect as well storm watch for some of the coastal areas and the blue there is avalanche warning do check before you uh, you go i don't know what fun it would be up there playing around in the snow when it is raining but you know check before you Go. there's some serious avalanche danger up there and this is spokane it, it, you can see as we go through 10 a.m monday tomorrow through 4 p.m tuesday they're talking about a foot foot and a half for stevens but much less for snoqualmie pass maybe an inch or two and then maybe some for sherman pass as you can see in some of the higher terrain just off to the east of omac there but you can see twist one to two and you know six to eight across some of the higher passes there as well there's diablo up there uh doesn't show any snowfall for them though now, uh, if we take a look here at Medford, Oregon, we also have some high wind warnings. We have wind advisories. We got flood watches and all kinds of stuff going on for Southern Oregon as well. Low pressure system is going to bring some very breezy conditions for the Oregon coast, especially on the day Monday. And now taking a look at Portland, wind advisories are up for some of the Willamette Valley. And again, the flood watch got high surf advisories. We got some big waves incoming with this system as well. I'll show you that here in a moment also. So take it easy out there if you have to go out and about you know take it easy now looking at breezy at windy tonight here there's some wind advisories up for tonight and some of the high wind watches extend all the way on in through the storm that will be coming in on monday so if i click on that you can see the high wind watch goes from monday morning through tuesday afternoon so a couple rounds of some very windy conditions and uh, over the next couple of days now uh if you guys want a nice affordable home weather station record the wind at your house lightning detection system tells you when it starts raining with this haptic rain gauge and you've got a great smartphone app highly recommend this system click on the link down below to save 10 percent off so we saw this plume all the way back we've been watching this for the last few days so here we go with sunday's frontal system moving through again this don't let this sneak up on you it's showing some 45 mile progress for seattle and down towards olympia tacoma we'll take a look at that initial system there but again the stronger storm will be spinning up as we go through the day on monday and just exactly where the slow is going to go we've got a pretty good idea it's going to come up our coastline here but is it going to kick through and bring some very windy conditions to the interior or is it going to spin off the coastline and weaken before it finally starts to move across the region we're still in that wait and see mode right now but i'll show you the latest wind speeds coming up here and then it looks like we do get a break as we go through the mid portion of the week upcoming maybe a brief week system on thursday relatively speaking anyway and then another dry day on friday now if we look at the european 06z run we're looking at mean sea level pressure and this also shows 500 millibar temperature not temperatures but heights and you can see the 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 green the red out there this is you know the cooler air aloft the lower heights and the the black lines are the mean sea level pressure underneath that so you'll see the system rolling in as we go through this evening and you see the pressure gradients heightened here for some of the region that's the system today but you'll definitely see the much stronger system as we go on in through monday I man look at this 977 millibar beast off the coastline that is going to make quite the dramatic representation on our satellite imagery and then you see the pressure gradient really start to ramp up to the oregon coast eventually the washington coast bent back occlusion will move into the coastal areas here as well now how far inland will these damaging winds get that's a good question because you know, there's a fine line. When you start getting up over 55 miles per hour, well, Amit Valley, Seattle, you can really start to cause some problems. 
But are we going to get there? That is the question. However, you look at the European and it, the pressure gradient is dangerously close to being quite high for Seattle, Portland, and through some of the Willamette Valley there. But you notice the low is weakening as it starts to pivot across western Washington. Then we get the pressure rise. We're going to get some blustery conditions as we go through the day Tuesday as we fill some high pressure back in there. And then maybe another weak system on Thursday. We won't worry about that right now. Now let's look at the GFS on the left versus the North American model on the right. And you'll see Sunday system. Good agreement with that and blustery conditions associated. But then the deeper low here does approach. And you can see how we have some of this discrepancy. Look at the NAM try to kick this inland a little bit further. That's a much more um, intense gradient for Western Washington versus the GFS where the slow pressure is spinning off the coastline, maturing, and it's filling there. And that would not bring a strong winds interior. But still a pretty good blow for some of the Oregon coast and the Willamette Valley here as well. And then the low wants to kick inland and bring some breezy conditions there as well. So we're still dealing with these timing discrepancies and just how strong the winds are going to be. Now, I want to show you the waves as well. If you're out on the coastal areas, Tuesday, Monday night and Tuesday, going to be kind of a wild time. Look at this wave action moving in Wednesday night into Tuesday morning. So heads up for that. And then we get a break as we go back in towards Wednesday morning. But yeah, I'll scroll back here and you can clearly see our storm system off to the south and west moving towards the coast of the Pacific Northwest. You know, Cape Disappointment, not a bad wave watching day there. Maybe on Tuesday morning, catch some big breakers out there. Uh, but yeah, careful if you're on the coastline for that. Now, surface base cape. I, we have some instability we're dealing with here as well. We could get a couple lightning strikes today across some of the region. They actually have, you know, kind of a, a wide swath on the severe prediction center that does have some thunderstorm potential. So maybe a lightning strike or two as we go through the day today. I'll show you what the European is showing here in a moment. But then as we go through Monday as well, we're going to destabilize things again. You can see Western Oregon, Western Washington. Can't roll out a lightning strike with that. And then again, maybe off to the east. Now, if we take a look at the European, I'm going to scroll through here and the european's been pretty bullish on showing you see these flashes the european sometimes really catches on to these pretty well and you see this up towards uh, you know, you're talking about Woodby Island here over towards Anacortes, and you're dealing with some of the I-5 corridor there as we go through this evening, and you kind of see it hanging out there. So would not be surprised to see a few lightning strikes associated with that. And then it also shows this little blurb north of Spokane as we go through tonight as well. And then we go on in towards Monday. Let's see what it shows. It starts to bring some of that chance. You see Western Oregon is first, and it moves across some of the Willamette Valley, maybe in the southwest Washington, and it shows some potential, eastern Oregon, eastern Washington, as well as we go through tomorrow night. So now let's take a look at the wind speeds, what everybody wants to know. How windy is it going to get here? Well, it's been fairly blustery along the Oregon coast this morning, and you can already see that. And then as we go through the day today, that's about 4 p.m. Does not start for Seattle yet. It starts to get a little bit breezy here for the Willamette Valley. And then we go through tonight, and look at that. The European wants to show 43 miles per hour. That'll get your attention out there for Seattle. 40 on the GFS on the right, some blustery conditions towards the coastline. That's the initial system. And the higher terrain, watch out for the stronger winds. You guys know the drill. We get a bit of a coastal jet here setting up along the Oregon coast, some strong winds in advance of the main system and its bent back occlusion. We scroll on in through Monday night and pretty good agreement on that strong bent back occlusion. There could be some gusts 70 plus here from, you know, Long Beach, maybe ocean shores south towards some of the northwest Oregon coastline. So watch out for that. Definitely will get your attention there. And you can see the GFS is in really good agreement on the position of that bent back occlusion. And look at the blow that it brings for the Willamette Valley. This would be some serious damage if this does verify. You're talking about gust towards 60 miles per hour. Things are very wet across the Willamette Valley. Those are unusual strength gusts. We really got to watch this. And then we scroll on in through Monday night into Tuesday morning, and you see the European still has some 50 mile per hour gusts in Southwest Washington, maybe up towards Seattle as well. And the, the I mean, the, the low pressure system here is showing it diving in a little bit. So it may, you know, not be as windy for areas further north. And you see the GFS kind of highlights that as well. And as we go on in through Tuesday, the system has gone through. It only shows the 43 mile per hour gust for Seattle on the GFS, the stronger winds just off to the south. But the Willamette Valley with a big blow there with this GFS run as of last night. 
But now let's take a look at the GFS as of this morning. The 12 Z run. Put this into motion. There goes the one tonight. It shows 39 for Seattle. Then we wait for the Coastal Jet to set up. You see the strong winds along the Oregon coast. Now here we go. There's the bent back occlusion. It does show it being weaker on the 12 Z run, but still fairly intense gusts here across some of the Willamette Valley. And again, not showing too much. You know, it'll be windy here for Seattle, but not a big blow for Seattle under the GFS's latest guidance. But very windy for the coastal area. Areas. And the Willamette Valley, you'd have to watch out for this for some tree damage as well. And you see some gusts, maybe, you know, 40, 45, 50 miles per hour east. But some of the higher terrain of Oregon is, you know, looking pretty windy also. Now, if we look here at the North American model, so you got the NAM on the left, you got the high resolution rapid refresh, the HER on the right. Here we go through the day today. You can see the NAM kicks it up towards 41 for this evening, 45 for Seattle. Now we scroll on in towards the big boy coming up here and you see the coastal jet set up. We start to bring some of these strong winds. Bent back occlusion on both uh, models is there. Uh, the HER favors uh, northwest Oregon on the 12Z and the NAM is further north across southwest Washington. But look at some of these wind speeds. My goodness, the HER is showing very strong winds across the the Willamette Valley, the NAM, as you can imagine, a bit further north, shows very strong winds even up towards the Puget Sound on that. I mean, look at this. It shows a 60-mile-per-hour gust for Seattle. That would be very problematic. But the NAM tends to be on the high side of things. But the European also showing some pretty intense gusts for Tacoma, Olympia, uh, I-5 corridor down into the Willamette Valley. So, yeah, right on the cusp. Again here, I wish I had better information to tell you, but the model's still in disagreement even at this late stage on just how strong the slow is going to be as it traverses the area. So six hour percent. So we're gonna have to check back again here probably later today, tonight, or tomorrow morning. I'll be doing my normal briefings, of course. Then, so here we go, looking at six hour precipitation amounts. You can see as we go through uh, Sunday night tonight, it, it, we're getting some pretty decent rain here, uh, reinvigorated across the area. Bit of a break here as we go through the day Monday. You can see for Seattle, some of the Willamette Valley even getting a bit of a break as we go through the morning hours. Then the next slug of moisture moves up and across the region. Again, these are six hour running totals. So you can see the pretty hefty amounts by the time we get towards Tuesday morning. Look at southwest Washington, man. These are six-hour totals up over an inch for some areas, so that would really exacerbate the flooding already kind of very close to being ongoing right now. And then we finally dry things out by the time we move to Tuesday night into Wednesday. A week system slides by Thursday, then another dry day, probably Friday. So we do have a break coming at the end of the tunnel here. <clears throat> now, taking a look at the, the European, we're all the way out towards Friday night, and you can see the additional rainfall as of last night through next Friday. There's still some pretty hefty amounts we have to go through. Big rain shadowing east. If we look at the excessive rainfall outlook, this is for today. Slight for the Olympics. Southern Washington Cascades, Oregon Cascades, the entire Oregon coast is under slight risk as well. And you can actually check this out. If you want to Google Weather Prediction Center excessive rainfall outlook, you can read all this fun stuff here if you really want to get into details here. But 6 to 10 in some favored terrain regions, increasing soil moisture and stream flow values and increasing the risk of flooding here. So that's why they got the slight risk up. And day two, they continue this on for some of those areas as well. And they also have a discussion for that. But by the time we get to day three on a Tuesday and Wednesday, they drop those. Makes sense. Um, six to 10 day temperature outlook above normal here for much of the West. Six to 10 day, kind of a mixed bag here still Pacific Northwest. And again, check before you go. If you're going off in the back country here, you see these flashing reds. Those are avalanche warnings, very dangerous conditions. The highest of the high out there. And, you know, we've got some additional snowfall for some of the higher peaks coming in here with, you know, warm up and cool down back and forth. Different layers out there can be very dangerous. And they don't mince words here on the avalanche center. Several rounds of natural avalanches large enough to bury and kill you are expected. So heads up. I mean, this is Snoqualmie Pass and they have it for upper, middle, and lower elevations there. So yeah, heads up for that. Um, but yeah, I, I may do another video here again today. I don't know exactly what I'm going to what I'm going to do, I'm going to wait for the 12Z European guidance to come out, and then I might drive out to the coastline and drop a couple probes if it looks like the low is going to make landfall somewhere along the northwest Washington coast. I will go out there and do that and try to capture some data on that. Then I may be out chasing tomorrow as well, again, depending on how strong winds are going to be here in the Seattle metro or what kind of activity we're dealing with. With some of that thunderstorm activity tomorrow, some of those segments are probably going to be rotating here across maybe some of the Willamette Valley up into Washington or even eastern Washington. So I may end up chasing that and trying to capture that needle on a haystack that is the Pacific Northwest tornado. <laughs> 
So yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But anyway, hope you guys are having a good day. Otherwise, I may check back in again here later today. If not, I may be driving out to the coastline to drop probes. So otherwise, I will talk to you guys either tonight or tomorrow, and I'll see you then.